You're listening to the Joelle Martin Mastery Podcast, home of the two-hour deep dive interview with gold, platinum, and multi-platinum bands, including Stained, Blue Rodeo, The Arkells, Finger Eleven, Big Wreck, Moist, Bedouin Soundclash, I Mother Earth, Hill Scarlet, Neverending White Lights, Thornley, and many more. Please take a moment to subscribe to the podcast as well as share, comment, and like. Now let's dive in to today's episode. Welcome everyone to today's episode of the podcast. Thank you for joining me. I really appreciate it. This is the first episode in a new series called 19 Insights About. In this series, I'll be spending 20 to 30 minutes per episode featuring just one musical artist to introduce them to a new audience of music lovers. And I'll also be sharing rare and lesser known info about the artist for those that are already diehard fans of the band. The first band that I'll be featuring is Stain. I was just 16 when the band released its album, Break the Cycle, back in 2001, and its lead single, It's Been a While, became a massive global hit. It's one of the first albums I truly cared about, and with the band releasing music now for the first time in over a decade, I thought, hey, this is the perfect band to kick off the series with. So without further ado, I hope you enjoy 19 Insights About Stained. Number one. Stained releases its first album in 12 years. On September 22nd, 2023, Stained released the album Confessions of the Fallen, its first new album since 2011. And of the band's eight studio albums, it's the first to not feature original drummer John Wysocki. John is a friend of the Joel Martin Mastery podcast, having been a guest on episodes 68 and 100. So I reached out to John to hear his thoughts on the new Stained album, and this is what he said. I really miss the Stained guys. I love the new record. They sound amazing. Please do yourself a favor and listen to it. Aaron especially sounds amazing, as usual. He's the best singer that I've had the privilege of working with for 15 to 20 years. All the best, my brothers. John Wysocki. Number two, Aaron Lewis's babysitter gave him his first three albums. In interviews, Aaron has said that his babysitter gave him his first three albums, which included The Wall by Pink Floyd, Dirty Deeds, Dun Dirt Cheap by ECDC, and Destroyer by Kiss. Can we take a moment to pour one out for this babysitter who could have given him some horrible albums, but instead it gave him three all-time greats? Later on, Aaron's musical taste veered more towards metal bands like Slayer and Pantera, but there was one metal album that really made an impression on him, and that was Korn's 1994 debut. We're going to further explore Stain's relationship with Korn a little further on in this episode. Number three, the band's name was originally Stain without the D. In 1995, the band formed in Springfield, Massachusetts, and they spent the next few years touring extensively in the Northeast, which helped them to develop a local following. They started as a band with the name Stain, which is Stained without the ED, uh, but they quickly found out there was another band with that name. So they just added the D without the E to be unconventional. And I have a confession. Uh, when I see the word Stained spelt correctly with ED, Looks like a typo to me because of this band. Same thing for you? Number four, Fred Durst played a pivotal role in Stain's early success. Stain self-released their debut album, Tormented, in 1996, and in 1997, they were booked for a concert slot with Limp Bizkit. Fred Durst was so impressed that he signed them to Flip Records, and in 1999, they released their major label debut, Dysfunction. The album was co-produced by Fred Durst, and two of the four singles, Mud Shovel and Home, cracked the top 20 on Billboard's modern rock and mainstream rock charts, helping the album go double platinum. Number 5. Outside Becomes a Surprise Hit Stain toured with Limp Bizkit for the Family Values Tour in 1999, where Aaron Lewis performed an early version of Outside with Fred Durst at the Mississippi Coast Coliseum. Aaron had been asked to perform a song by himself that night and at the last minute decided to perform a song he had been working on with his acoustic side project, J-Cat, since the early days of Stained. And he actually finished the lyrics on the spot while performing the song that night. 
That live acoustic version of Outside from the Family Values Tour 1999 album got picked up at radio stations across the country and became a surprise hit, peaking at number one on Billboard's mainstream rock charts, which was perfect timing because the band had a new album that it was prepping to release. Number six, Korn requested Stain to perform a Korn song at a Korn concert. In 2000, Stain went on tour with Korn for their Sick and Twisted tour. On that tour, Korn would take a break in the middle of their set, and then Jonathan Davis would come back on stage with the bagpipes to start their song, Shoots and Ladders. That break didn't seem to be working too well, as Korn would lose the momentum that they had been building up until that point. So Korn's bass player, Fieldy, went into Stain's dressing room and said, you guys used to play Korn songs, right? To which Stain replied, yeah, we know how to play your song, Need To. So Fieldy asked them to play that song during the break, which they did. And someone captured that rare performance on video of Stain performing a corn song at a corn concert, which you can find by searching on YouTube, Stained, Need To, in brackets, Corn Cover Live, Sick and Twisted Tour 2000. And I'll put the link to that video in the description of this video. Number seven. Stain breaks through to the mainstream with Break the Cycle. Stain released its third album, Break the Cycle, in 2001, and on the strength of the first single, It's Been a While, debuted at number one on the Billboard Top 200 chart, selling a staggering 716,000 copies in its first week, going gold in week number one and platinum in week number two. The album's first week sales were the second highest of any album that year, and it would go on to sell over 7 million copies, making Stain one of the faces of new metal. The album had five hit singles, including It's Been a While, Fade, Outside, For You, and Epiphany. And speaking of Fade, after 9-11, TV and radio stations started banning any songs that had to do with death, and Stain's music video for Fade was one of those casualties. MTV ended up banning the music video for Fade because it showed a clock tower collapsing over the band while they performed that song. Number eight, It's Been a While becomes the second longest running number one in the history of the U.S. mainstream rock charts. It's Been a While spent a total of 20 weeks on top of Billboard's mainstream rock charts, which is the second most weeks at number one of all time behind only Loser by Three Doors Down. It also spent 16 weeks at number one on the hot modern rock charts, which at the time was a record. Those 36 combined weeks at number one on both charts make it one of the highest joint numbers of all time. And the music video for It's Been a While was directed by Fred Durst of Limp Bizkit, who once again makes an appearance in crucial moments at the start of Stain's career. Number nine, the birth of Aaron Lewis's first child heavily influenced their album 14 Shades of Grey. In 2003, Stain releases 14 Shades of Grey, which debuts at number one on Billboard's top 200 album charts, giving them their second number one album, which would also go on to be certified platinum. The album featured four singles, Price to Play, So Far Away, How About You, and Zoe Jane. Speaking of Zoe Jane, prior to the writing and recording of the album, Aaron and his wife had their first child and took a few months off to adjust to becoming parents. The song Zoe Jane honors their firstborn daughter, and shots of Zoe Jane are featured in the music video for So Far Away. In reference to the story behind the title of the album, 14 Shades of Grey, the band has said, I think it's kind of referring to how in life there's black and white, and then there's this gray area. I think the older you get, you start to realize that more things are gray and not so much black and white. Number 10. So Far Away has one of the longest consecutive number one runs in the history of the U.S. mainstream rock charts. So Far Away enjoyed a ton of success at rock and mainstream radio, reaching number one on Billboard's modern rock charts for seven non-consecutive weeks. And even more impressive, it spent 14 consecutive weeks at number one on the mainstream rock charts, which is one of the longest runs in the chart's history. Even though It's Been a While spent more total weeks at number one, So Far Away's reign at the top was all consecutive, which is very hard to do. 
This episode has been brought to you by the Women in the Music Industry podcast. It's hosted by music producer Rob Wells, who has worked with global superstars like Justin Bieber, Ariana Grande, and Selena Gomez. Through his one-hour interviews, he shines a spotlight on the remarkable women who are breaking barriers and making their mark in the music industry. Some of his notable guests include Morgan Lander of the multi-million selling metal band Kitty, and Pam Shane, who co-wrote Genie in a Bottle for Christina Aguilera. If you're a fan of the Joelle Martin Mastery Podcast, you'll love the Women in the Music Industry Podcast, which is available on all platforms. Number 11. Chapter 5 becomes Stain's third consecutive number one album. In 2005, Stain released Chapter 5, which became their third consecutive album to top the Billboard 200 charts. The album had five singles with Right Here, Schizophrenic Conversations, Falling, Everything Changes, and King of All Excuses. The first single, Right Here, became the third most successful single of the band's career on the charts behind It's Been a While and So Far Away. The album has sold over 1.5 million copies worldwide, and in response to the album going to number one, Aaron Lewis has said, Having three straight number one albums was a nice big screw you to a lot of people who have slagged us. Nobody can ever take away that fact. I saw Stained Live twice on the Chapter 5 tour. Once in Quebec City with Three Doors Down and Breaking Benjamin on July 11th, 2005, and then once in Montreal with Default on October 29th, 2005. Number 12. Stained had to walk through a strip club to get to the rehearsal space. On episode number 58 of the podcast, I interviewed three-time Grammy winner David Bottrell, who produced and mixed Stain's album Chapter 5, and during that interview, he shared the following story. John Wysocki's friend owned a warehouse, and they were using the top floor as the rehearsal space. The band wanted to build a studio in there, but it was actually the entrance to a strip club, and we had to go through it in order to get to their space. We'd have to go in with the strippers in the morning as they're entering for their day shift, and we'd walk up the stairs and make music in the studio. Then we'd have to walk back through the strip club at night to leave. It was a very interesting experience. After he shared that story, I commented that that didn't sound so bad, and his response was, You know what? No. Because if you think that there's any kind of glamour that goes on in a strip club, don't ever walk into one in the daytime with the fluorescent lights on. Valid point, sir. Valid point. Number 13. Stain releases a Greatest Hits album, which also features live acoustic covers of Tool, Pink Floyd, and Alice in Chains. In 2006, Stain released its greatest hits album called The Singles, 1996 to 2006, as well as a companion DVD called Stained The Videos. Surprisingly, despite being singles, Just Go, Fade, How About You, and King of All Excuses are missing from the album. To make up for that, they did include six live acoustic songs, including covers of Tool, Pink Floyd, and Alice in Chains that were recorded in New York City in September of 2006, as well as a remastered version of Come Again from their debut independent album, Tormented. Number 14. Aaron Lewis makes Hit Parader's list of heavy metal's top 100 vocalists. In a 2006 issue of Hit Parader, they published their list of heavy metal's all-time top 100 vocalists, which included Stain's very own Aaron Lewis. Here's what the editors of the magazine said. Assembling our list certainly presented a daunting task considering the breadth and scope of the metal empire during its 35-year reign as rock's most powerful and enduring force. We tried our best not to turn this into some sort of popularity contest where only the most famous or infamous frontmen in metal lore were recognized. Here's who they selected in their top 10. Robert Plant, Rob Halford, Steven Tyler, Chris Cornell, Bon Scott, Freddie Mercury, Bruce Dickinson, Ozzy Osbourne, Paul Rogers, and Ronnie James Dio. Aaron Lewis was listed at number 49. What do you guys think? Should he have been listed higher? Number 15. Stained records the illusion of progress in a barn. In 2008, Stain released the album The Illusion of Progress, which debuted at number three and featured four singles, including the number one hit, Believe. It was recorded in Aaron Lewis's home studio, 
which is a barn in Massachusetts where producer Johnny K backed up a trailer and loaded in the recording equipment. The band's idea was that instead of spending, say, $3,000 a day in a high-end recording studio, that they could invest some money into something that they could use over and over again. They went in with the mindset of making their heaviest album yet, but ended up with their most musical, having hints of Pink Floyd and straight-up blues. For the first time, Mike Mushok plays guitar solos, the band used vintage guitars and amps, and they also introduced new instruments like the pedal steel guitar, slide guitar, piano, organ, and female backup vocals. Aaron would end up recording a country version of the album's ninth track, Tangled Up in You, in 2011, but we'll get to that in a little bit. Number 16. Stain goes on hiatus for over a decade. In 2011, Stain released its self-titled seventh album, which marked the band's fifth in a row to debut in the top five, and it featured four singles, including Not Again, which topped the mainstream rock charts for seven non-consecutive weeks. The album marks a return to the band's aggressive, heavier sound from its earlier albums like Tormented and Dysfunction, and I have to say that the album sounds great. Despite it being heavy, there's a warmth to the recording that makes it a very pleasurable listen. This is the last studio album to feature drummer John Wysocki and the band's original lineup as Stain would go on hiatus for over a decade before re-emerging with new drummer Sal Giancarelli, who was actually John's drum tech for over 12 years. Number 17, Aaron Lewis Becomes a Country Star. Since 2010, as a solo artist, Aaron has released five albums, two of which have gone to number one on the U.S. country charts, and he's released six singles, with the two most popular being the platinum-selling Country Boy and the number one charting Am I the Only One. When reflecting back on where his love of country comes from, Aaron has said, I grew up on country music, as my grandfather was always playing it, but when he passed away, I kind of forgot about it for a while. We went on tour with Kid Rock in 1999, and he had nothing but old country playing. It was very hauntingly familiar. It was all stuff I had heard in my childhood, and once Kid Rock reintroduced me to it, I had a hard time getting away from it. Personally, my favorite Aaron Lewis song is called Someone, which is off his newest album called Frayed at Both Ends. Now, to tie this back with Stained, Aaron re-recorded the band's song Tangled Up in You from their album The Illusion of Progress, giving it a country twist. Number 18, Mike Mushok forms the supergroup Sane Asonia. During Stained's hiatus, Mike played guitar for former Metallica bassist Jason Newstead's aptly titled new band, Newstead, and was featured on their debut album. Mike also teamed up with former Three Days Grey singer Adam Gonche, former Finger Eleven drummer Rich Beto, and I Empire bassist Corey Lowry to form Sane Asonia, which has released two albums and two EPs. I reached out to friend of the podcast, Rich Beto, who I interviewed on episodes 59 and 83, to hear his thoughts on being in a band with Mike, and here's what he said. Recording a record, then touring the world to promote that record with Mike was a great experience. He's a total pro. He plays guitar all day on the bus, and he's always so powerful and reliable on stage. He'd also get up at 5 a.m. every day to talk to his kids, which I really admired. Now to bring this full circle with Stain, their new drummer Sal Giancarelli also joined Santa Sonia from 2017 to 2020. Number 19. Stain's new album, Confessions of the Fallen, is a hit. In September, Stain released Confessions of the Fallen, their first album in 12 years, which debuted at number four, marking the band's sixth consecutive album to debut in the top five. It features four singles, two of which, Lowest in Me and Here and Now, became top 10 hits on Billboard's mainstream rock charts, with Lowest in Me spending two weeks at number one, becoming the band's fifth number one single and their first since 2011's Not Again. I've listened to the album many times, and I'd say that my favorite song is Better Days. Stained, that should be your fifth single. The album sounds both old and new at the same time. Old because there's the vintage stain sound with how heavy the songs are and with Mike Mushok's signature harmonic guitar riffs, but also new because of how polished the mix is and the use of programming on the drums. To promote the album, the band went on a massive arena tour with Godsmack, and they've got another one coming up with Seether. Hey Stained, Ottawa or Montreal dates, please. 
I hope you enjoyed 19 Insights About Stained. This was my way of honoring one of my favorite bands by sharing their story, their music, and their legacy. If you're a Stained fan, please share the episode to help spread the word about this incredible band. And if you know someone who loves Stained, please send this to them so that this episode can find an audience who will appreciate it. As I wrap up, I'm going to leave you with just one question. What band or solo artist would you like me to feature on the next episode of 19 Insights About? You can let me know by sending me an email at joelmartinmastery at gmail.com, or you can reach out to me on any of the social media sites. So thanks for tuning in. I really appreciate it, and I'll see you on the next episode. If you've enjoyed today's episode of the podcast, please take a moment to subscribe, like, comment, and share. What I want to know is who would you like me to sit down with next for a two-hour deep dive interview? You can let me know by reaching out to me on social media. You can find me on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok at Joel Martin Mastery. Joel is J-O-E-L. And you can find me on Twitter and Snapchat at Joel Mastery. So I am done. I am complete. I approve this message. And I'll see you on the next episode.